Thanks for tuning in to this latest climate update. We did two in January, and here's one in late February. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. We'll open this up with some snow photos from the cold storms that occurred in February 2022. However, most of the water year has been dry or below average. We had a very wet month of December 2021, and then the bottom line is it's been dry since, much below precipitation since January 1st, 2022. In fact, January was record dry in some areas. Here's a look at some of the sunsets, though, that occurred during that dry period. Since January 1st, precipitation it's really been all or nothing. So we had a wet December and January and February, the wettest months on record were much below average, less than 25% of average statewide. Conditions were also mild across California. If we look at the water year, so this goes back to October 1st, we can see that almost all of California now is below average. In fact, the below average has crept across central and northern California with only residual green shaded or average precipitation remaining around the Tahoe area. Temperatures overall in the dry weather pattern have been above average. If you rank the precipitation across the state, you can see far northern California has some locations that are the driest on record since December 1st. Even in Central California, top 10, a lot of locations. When you go into Southern California, it's hit or miss. We have desert areas that are top 10 driest on record. However, along coastal areas, it is not nearly the driest on record for the period December through February. Now, if we look at just January and February 2022, it shows a different story. Santa Ana, the second driest period on record. Riverside, again, the second driest period, January through February 2022 on record. If we take a look at a mountain location, how dry has it been? Idlewild, under an inch of precipitation for the two-month period. The two months that are the wettest on average. Even if you go down into San Diego County where more precipitation has occurred, Palomar Mountain, is sitting in the top 10 for driest on record with only about two inches of precipitation. Now, if we remove December and just show you the rankings for January and February, many locations in Central Northern California, driest on record. In Southern California, even some locations here, top 10 driest. Rapid drying has resulted in dry fuel moistures in January, and since then, with the precipitation, fuel moistures have recovered, but are only at average levels. They were at record levels, now they're at average levels. Here's a look at February. As you can see, fuel moisture was critically dry in January, and now it has risen above record dry levels along the coast, and is above the red line, but still below the average. So still drier than it should be for fuel moisture. Here is the reason why fuel moistures are so dry and precipitation has been very much below average across Southern California. Take a look at your favorite climate location. Anaheim, nearly five inches below average for this date. San Diego Airport, about two and a half inches below average. Look at a location in the desert, Palm Springs, almost two inches below average. Escondido, nearly four inches below average. Even the mountain locations such as Idlewild, nearly six inches below average. The only area we have with precipitation having occurred and is above average still is Big Bear Lake, thanks to the very wet month of December. The annual precipitation is shown on the right-hand side. Now, we mentioned the percent of average in December, and it was wet. It was record wet in a lot of places. The purple shaded areas were over 
of average, so two times as much precipitation, some areas close to three times as much precipitation fell just in that period of December. So the water year was looking really good back in December. Let's take a look at the state water supply now, thanks to that wet December. We saw some significant increases, such as Lake Oroville went from a record low of 20% capacity up to nearly half full, 47% capacity. But still, most of the reservoirs are below their historical average, which is the green line. If we look at local water supply in Southern California, including Big Bear Lake, still at 15 feet below full level, Diamond Valley Reservoir in Temecula at 71% capacity and continuing to drop. So despite the wet December, very little gains. In fact, drying continues in some of the local water supplies. It's also been warm. If you consider the evaporation that takes place during warm years, 2021 over Big Bear Lake was the third warmest on record. Even in the San Diego County region, we see that the water supply is sitting at about 45% of full capacity, so less than half of full capacity. This is primarily a reflection of local management of water and local runoff from precipitation, which the deficits are significant this year and last year. Here's another way to look at the snow water equivalent or snowpack. So despite records being broken in December, the snowpack currently in California in late February is at levels similar to last year, which was dry. So the blue line indicates running almost identical to 2020, 2021. Snowpack considerably below average now. And here's another way to look at it. Mammoth Mountain in Central California, 161 inches of snow in December alone, no snow in January, and only several inches in February. So this gives you an idea how dry January and February was for precipitation and snow. If you look at precipitation, water total in the Sierra Nevada you can see it also has now dropped below average and it's sitting at 90% of average. A complete flat line of the blue line indicated here due to lack of precipitation in January and now in February. If you look over in Colorado, if you had a little bit better of a winter, it's now sitting at about 93% of normal. And the historical low on Lake Mead has turned over and water has risen somewhat, still well below capacity levels and below average in that, that water supply. Now, why? Why was it so wet in December? The storm track in December, shown here, was allowed to come down from the north, but dig so far south it tapped into tropical moisture, not once, but at least three times in the form of atmospheric rivers. Now, an upper level block of high pressure in the Pacific is what allowed those storms to come down from the north, which is not our normal active storm track, not our normal active storm track for California. Now, since then, that upper level ridge has shifted just enough eastward, and it is unusually strong as indicated by the deep red and orange shaded, so much warmer of an air mass, much stronger of a block than what you normally expect in the Pacific in January and February. That's been keeping storms to our north and mostly to our east and putting us on the drier, windy side. If you look at last year, a similar weather pattern occurred and last year was dry across all of California where storms were just a little too far to the north and turning to the east with a major 
unusual block across the Pacific Ocean. This is the storm track jet stream level where the airplanes would fly, same path that storms approach California by. Are we gonna see a change? The weather outlook for mid-March looks like this. Normal precipitation for Southern California, but cooler than average temperatures. So increased storminess across much of the West as shown here and cooler than average temperatures. So there is some hope and a good chance of seeing precipitation at least at normal levels in March. Now remember March typically averages around what we see in December. So not the wettest month, but typically an average month of March will bring December levels of precipitation on average. If you look for the entire month, equal chances is indicated for most of California, which means near normal precipitation. So that would be good news. That would mean we could receive two or three average storms in California. So below average temperatures, but average precipitation across the state is the latest forecast for March 2022. So by no means a miracle March, by no means as wet as what we saw in December, but average precipitation in March is still significant. For example, it's around an inch and a half in San Diego. If we look at computer models, they show the same thing. Relatively dry conditions for the next couple of weeks, but a change in the weather pattern in middle portion of March that could bring increased storminess to central Northern California and at least average precipitation to Southern California. So the precipitation change in mid-March does look promising to at least give us average precipitation.